when I start creating again, is it gonna take me a long time to get back to where I was when I stopped? Aloha and welcome back. I'm still reeling from last week's revelation. What a gut punch. I'm on my way to Kiholo, Kiholo Bay for my artist date. I'm in week two, so we're moving on to week two. And for the first time in my morning pages, I devoted all three pages to creativity. When and if I get my creativity back, I think I know what direction I'm gonna head first. And that's encouraging, but I'm gonna keep that to myself for right now. All right, and here's a quote from the book. As we gain strength, so will some of the attacks of self-doubt. Just as that quote said, as soon as I wrote down the direction I wanted to head, self-doubt came crashing in. I mean, will I be good enough? Can I pull it off? And then there's always the, I know I'm not gonna finish it once I get it started. The goal as we progress is to become more comfortable creating than not creating. Focus on the process, not the end product. The three areas that she focused on this week is crazy makers, skepticism, and paying attention or just attention. And crazy makers, that's just what it sounds like. Those are the personalities that create storm centers of chaos. And they like drama as long as they're in the middle of it. And everyone around them is just their supporting cast. And these crazy makers, they can be in your family. You know, that one person that's just pitting family member against family member. It's kind of sad. I have several friends and some family that unfortunately have these people in their lives, in their families. It's not fun. And the author says that many times these people are block creatives themselves. And for the most part, I've been able to avoid being involved with these characters, but there is one from my past that stands out. Uh, it was a lot of years ago. I was in a pretty intense seminar where I was going to learn how to teach management skills to supervisors and managers. The training was in LA and on the flight my HR manager was with me and she told me that it's a pass-fail seminar. And the company spent a lot of money, so I better pass. No pressure, right? So I did pass and then a few weeks later it was time for me to teach my first class. And then my manager calls me into his office. Our busy season is right around the corner. Your department is not ready. Your numbers suck. We've hired a lot of new employees, so we're trying to get them trained so when the crunch hits, we're ready. No excuses. Fix it now. And when did this asshole decide to have this meeting? It was about 20 minutes before I was to teach that first class. Crazy makers will choose critical moments to unleash their sabotage, planting bombs to explode right when their victim is close to success. The class was fine, but I was pissed and pretty rattled the entire time. Yeah, I know, the class was managing with skills. Yeah, he was in my class. And I'm teaching my own manager how to manage people. Crazy, right? But it didn't take. This is a paraphrase from the book, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. If these crazy makers are this destructive, why are we involved with them? Her answer is brutal. She says we're crazy ourselves and self-destructive, willing to do anything to remain blocked rather than the challenge of having a creative life of our own. She says we often fear that if we let ourselves be creative, we will become those crazy makers ourselves and abuse those around us. So that's how others can be a barrier and we can walk away from those people. But the thing we can't walk away from is our own skepticism. And that's probably our biggest barrier. And if you watch my videos, you know that I have my own issues with this. I mean, will the artist date do anything for me? I've religiously been doing the morning pages every morning. Nothing's changed. Am I even doing them right? But then we also feel like frauds if we have any success. We need to be open to new ideas and new ways of being creative. I like the analogy she gave. She says our minds are like being in a room. In that room are all of our normal ideas about what's possible and what's not. The room has a door, it's slightly ajar, and outside we see flashing lights of new creative pursuits that we consider too far out for us. What do we do? We shut that door. We stay secure with the ideas we're comfortable with in the room and just keep the rest out. That's our normal. Now that we're recovering our creativity, we need to set aside that skepticism, maybe to use later if we need it. We just need to open that door and be open to what's out there. Just give it a shot. More than anything else, creative recovery is an exercise in open-mindedness. In this part of the chapter, she talks about paying attention. Paying attention to the world around you. And she talks about pain 
being the thing that causes us to pay more attention. While I don't disagree, I don't think that's true for everyone. I mean, when I lost my dad last year, I wanted more distraction. I didn't want to pay attention to anything. But maybe that distraction was me paying attention to something else that was distracting me. I don't know. Maybe she's right. I didn't think about that till just now. This book does make you think a lot. On uh, one of my morning walks this week, I thought about why it is that I don't want to create. What's what's holding me back? Was was I afraid of something? Just why didn't I want to create anything? Why do I have like zero motivation? I don't know if it's my main problem, but I do have a fear that once I start creating again, I'm not going to be where I was before, if that makes sense. And for, for example, I trained for a marathon a long time ago, like eight years ago, I guess now. And I pulled a calf muscle really bad right in the middle of my training. And I lost a week and a half, two weeks. And it took me a long time just to get back to where I was when I pulled that calf muscle. As far as my you know, distance I could run and pace I could keep. I think that's what I'm afraid of when I start creating again. Is it going to take me a long time to get back to where I was when I stopped? But I won't know until I try. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Mahalo.